YouTube is filled with product photography tutorials that require expensive gear, multi-light setups, and a lot of Photoshop. You don't need any of that. In fact, it'll hinder your progress when starting your business. The truth is your photos don't need to be the best. They just need to be good enough. Today, we're talking about why it's critical to keep it as simple as possible when you're starting out in product photography and trying to gain those early clients. Let's get it. If you're new here, I'm Chris Pieta. I teach creative business and product photography. This video is gonna get heated. I already can see the comments coming about why I'm wrong, but this is what I believe and it served me well when I was starting my business, learning product photography, and gaining my first clients. In a nutshell, you don't need to be that good at product photography to get clients. Let me make one thing clear. This video is not attacking people that are great photographers. Instead, this is what I'm trying to get at here. There are gonna be clients with different budgets that will work with different levels of photographers. This is just like you can go get a $7 haircut or a $100 haircut. That $7 haircut isn't gonna look great, but it'll be passable. And that $100 haircut is gonna be perfect. You can apply the same thing to your photography. Your local coffee shop that's run by the sweet couple doesn't have thousands to spend on photography. They just want good photos, but they don't care if you have a complex three light setup and a bunch of Photoshop to get the perfect image. They just want a fun photo of their cappuccino. Now, a brand like Red Bull, they have a lot of money and they'll want the best of the best in terms of photography. They need these complex shoots, but the competition is fierce to get that client. To illustrate this, we're going to list out product photographers from one star to five stars. All right, your one star product photographer just discovered photography. They're learning the ropes and you can see mistakes in their photos. They can take a picture of a can of cold brew, but the photo has ugly reflections, there might be dirt in it, and there might be dents on the can. It's a photo of a product, but it's quite frankly a bad photo. These are the bottom 10%. Next, we have the two star photographer. They've been doing this for some time. They understand the basic lighting principles and they know how to make products look good. They can match the background to the products and just have a simple one light setup. These photos are good. These make up the next 20%. The three star photographer has had six months to a year of experience under their belt. They've been doing product photography for a bit now. They use one light plus reflectors and they know exactly how to light products to make them look great. They know how to use some basic props and have some basic Photoshop knowledge to remove blemishes from the cans. They take great photos and they make up a huge chunk of photographers, let's say 50%. Next, we have the four star photographer. They've got one to three years of experience. They know how to use multiple lights, but don't always use them. They're really good at styling. They take creative creative photos, they know lifestyle photography, they take action photos, all sorts of product shots. They're really good at what they do and they make up the top 20% photographers. Now, the five-star photographer is elite. They're an industry vet. Their shoots take a very long time and sometimes require multiple people and a team. Their photos are incredible and perfect in every way. They make up the top 1% of photographers. Now, I know my math adds up to 101% here, but bear with me. Now, if you're starting out and finding clients as a product photographer, being a five-star photographer is gonna hinder you. The clients that hire these have huge budgets and they're international brands that already have agencies and the best photographers in the world working for them. If you're starting out, there's no chance that you'll be able to compete with those photographers. These people are well-connected and they have no need for a random new photographer. But the three to four star photographer has a huge advantage when starting out because they can target those smaller brands that don't necessarily need those big studio shoots, but they still need photos. There are so many small to medium sized businesses out there that are hungry for content. These businesses, quite frankly, can't afford those five star photographers, so they go with the great photos from the three to four star photographers. Those photographers are within their budget and do incredible work for them. The photographers charge less, but the photo shoots don't take as long as a five star photo shoot would take. They're a lot less complex and most people won't see a real difference between those photos. The three to four star photographer can quickly set up their equipment, take some awesome photos, edit and get them to the client. They can work with smaller budgets and there are a lot more clients for them to target. Now, if you're the one star photographer, Maybe some local coffee shops will hire you for very low rates, but honestly, you just need to practice and level up to at least level two. If you're at two stars, you're definitely not good enough for those huge brands, but the local businesses will be happy to work with you. Small coffee shops with tight budgets, startups with one to four people, all these businesses need photos. If you can charge 10 to 50 bucks a photo, they'll be happy to pay you for the good work that you do. The truth is, at the end of the day, everyone has to meet their budget. You might take awesome photos and have really cool ideas for the coffee shop, but they just don't have the money to make it worth your time for that shoot. This does take some self-awareness. Personally, I think most of my photos are in that three to four star range, and I've been able to work with 50 plus clients during the past 18 months 
wants doing that. These clients are not huge brands. They're smaller startup companies with limited budgets. I'm able to create awesome photos for these brands and they usually just take a single light setup and maybe a reflector. These take some time to create, but they aren't as intense as a five-star photographer photo. I don't use multiple lights, snoots, complex setups, or even merging a lot of layers in Photoshop. I keep things simple, but the results are still amazing. In fact, I think I earn more per hour of shooting than a five-star photographer. I'm able to work fast and charge a decent amount. A five-star photographer takes a long time to work, but charges a lot to make up for it. Now, I know some of you are going to be saying, Chris, I want to be the best photographer I can be. And that's a great thing to say, but know when you should be putting that extra effort in for photo shoots. After all, you're going to be running a business here and your art is not the priority. It's getting your clients results. I've reached out to brands via email in the past and I often get the response, your stuff looks really good. I'd love to talk, but I'm just afraid I can't afford your services. I've just disqualified myself from a lead because my stuff appears too good. If all your work is that of a five-star photographer and you're reaching out to those small brands, they might not be willing to talk to you just because they assume you're charging thousands and thousands. In fact, they might not even reply to your email because of this thought in their head. The key here is to match up your photography stars to the company stars. A two-star company will hire a two-star photographer. A four-star company will hire a four-star photographer. Make sure that you're reaching out to the right companies that match your photography skill set. Starting low will be a good way for you to learn the business side of it as well. When you're negotiating with a two-star client, there's a lot less money on the line and a lot less pressure on you. You'll get good practice here. Then when your skill levels up, you'll be that much more confident negotiating with a four-star company. The whole point of this video is to make it clear that you don't need to be that good to start getting clients. You can get plenty of clients by just being a pretty good product photographer. Just like that crappy $7 haircut, people will be willing to pay for your photography if you're new and the brand is small. I actually just got some product photography prints in the mail, so I want to open those up and let you decide what level photographer I am. These are from a company called Canvas Discount. I bought one of their prints in the past and I actually have it hanging in the other room. They reached out and offered to send some over for the studio and I thought they'd make an awesome addition. These are some of my favorite product photos I've ever taken, and I want to get them printed to really show them off and bring the room together. Canvas Discount has really affordable, good quality prints. And as a sponsor for this portion of the video, I was able to get a 25% discount code for you guys. Getting your work printed is a game changer. There's a link in my description that will take you to canvasdiscount.com slash chrispieta, and there you can use that 25% off code chrispieta25 when you spend 50 bucks or more. I think these look awesome in the studio. During my product photography and business journey, I thought a lot about the photographer I want to be. I'm sticking around that four star range because these are the best clients to take on. They're fun to work with, they don't micromanage, and your photos really impact their brands. I knew I wouldn't be able to compete with the Coca-Cola photographers of the world, so I didn't even bother. If I wanted to take that path, it would take me years and years of practice, networking, and experience. I just didn't have the time. I was eager to start my product photography business and quit my 9 to 5. I was impatient and because of that, I figured out I could just work with the smaller companies that don't require the top 0.01% of talent. On YouTube, you'll find a lot of great product photography guides, but the problem with these is that they're teaching 5-star photography. You don't need this. You learn the 5-star photography, pitch yourself to a smaller client, and then spend forever trying to create those 5-star photos for them. If you're trying to actually have a profitable business, you need to match your photography skill set to your client budgets. It is my belief that the sweet spot for this is around that three to four star range. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments on this one. I think we can have a great discussion. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.